Hello everyone, my name is Jutroid, and I know many of you out there are having trouble either understanding Redstone itself or understanding ways that it can be used. So today we are going to try to remedy that. We're going to start with a latch. This here is technically an RS NOR latch, but technically that doesn't matter. What this does is it will receive input and change states. Uh, it will stay in this state, regardless of how many times we try to give it more input, until it is reset. This is my favorite redstone circuit there is, because it's so useful. And we are going to use this to solve a problem. Here's your standard entryway that someone might build. It has a pressure plate to get in and a pressure plate to get out on the other side. They'll be really happy with this until a mob steps on the plate in the front, comes into their house uninvited and ruins their day. So then they swap out the plate with a button. And they're like, yeah, this is awesome. I can get into my house. I can get out. And then one day they are running from a creeper, trying to get in their house. They push the button, they turn around, catch the creeper, and then the door shuts in their face. So what we want to do is we want to work around this problem using one of these. So what we're going to do is we're going to leave this button here. Uh, maybe not there, we might move it, but we're going to use a button to to have the door stay open until we walk over this plate, which will cause it to shut. First, I'm going to show you how this looks like when it's not buried and hidden deep in a dark hole. So all you really need to do is hook up a door to the output of a latch, then have the um, this plate here is representative of this plate, the reset and this plate here is representative of our button. So when the button is pushed, the door opens. It stays open. We can hit this over and over again. The door won't close until we hit the reset, which causes it to finally close. And then this will once again function. We've dug a hole large enough to fit our latch in, so we are going to recreate it inside of the hole. Now, if you see here, it's two blocks spaced apart uh, diagonally by one. There's a um, torch on each block, sort of facing towards each other, and then they're connected via redstone. Down here, what we need to do is we need to take the output of this uh, pressure plate feed it into the reset line for our latch, and we need to take the button here and feed it into the input, and we need to take the um, output state, well technically the opposite of the output state, and feed it into this torch so that it will keep this door closed and or open whenever the state matches what we want it to. Then we're going to use one of these so that it stays closed properly. And we can tap into the button here. So now the mechanism works. The door stays open until we cross through, step on the plate, and then step off the plate. And this is reasonably hideable. I mean, we can cover this up and things should stay mostly out of the way. Uh, I normally don't like to have the button here in this case because uh, I 
think it looks a little better if it's a little bit forward, like, like here. Plus it makes it a little easier to hide because you can get under the ground without having to have the back of the wall exposed like that. So we're going to move this button. Okay, I've hidden most of the circuitry, so all you see is the button and the plate. So you hit the button, door stays open, walk through, door closes, and because the plate is immediately against the door, you can walk up, the door will open, and you can walk out. So when you're running from the creeper, you can hit the button, run towards the door, and you survive. So I'm going to show you another thing that you can do with latches. They can be part of an alarm system. See this non-lit redstone torch in here, and this one here, and this one here. This entire complex that I'm in is, ooh, moon rise. This entire complex that I'm in is rigged with an alarm system. Press button for alarm. What this does is it travels far, far away and will activate the alarm. Uh, I built this before there were note blocks, so it doesn't make any noise. And I used to have it so the light would blink, but that was really laggy in the server, so now it just stays on. You can hit this button all you want afterwards, and the alarm will stay on until you reset it at the uh, reset switch. Which is pretty far. Oh, and the lights are also on over here. We'll run into a few more. There's one there. One there. There's a couple more up there. We go all the way up into the barracks, which existed before there were beds. I should really fix that and reset the alarm. Now if we go down, we will see that the redstone torch has now gone out, and I will fast forward over to the other spot to show you that one. Off, off, and off. This is actually the first redstone project that I did. As you can see, it runs for quite a while and is extensive. Actually, let me get through some of this. It goes up to that tower and then there's a uh, bit of badly wired circuitry in there for the rest of it. This alarm works under the exact same principle. Uh, we have a latch up here, and all of the wires are brought together. If they change, then it's triggered, and it stays triggered until it's reset. And then the output goes out to all the locations to light the torches. Latches are also the core of my combination lock, and I'll put a video link somewhere on the screen right about now so you can take a look at that. And what it does is each button press, uh, it states saved, and then it also allows the next button to be pushed by unlocking the next latch. And then we also use the same door circuit to hold it open so that we can pass through and then reset the whole system.